Hey guys, today I have an Ulta haul to share with you. I got some brand new drugstore products that just hit their website. I also shopped in store and got a couple things there as well. So we're just gonna try everything on. And as always, I'm gonna share my honest thoughts with you guys. I am an unsponsored makeup channel. So if you're new here and that sounds good, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. And let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started. All right, so the first product I actually got in store, this is by Lano Lips and they have some brand new lip balms out. This one's called Glazed Donut and it's part of their 101 Delicious line. So I was really excited to see this. I love Lano Lips. They're lanolin based lip balms. Now I know some people can be allergic to lanolin. So I just wanted to put that out there, but this is a multi-use balm. So you can use it on lips, skin patches, cuticles, elbows, wherever you want. And it has a super thick and rich texture. And that's what I love about lip balms like this, especially that have this ingredient. If you all remember the Bite Beauty Agave lip mask that was originally formulated with lanolin it was a super thick rich formula and it stayed on the whole night I loved it so much and then they reformulated to make it vegan and for me it just wasn't the same after that I mean it was good for anybody who can't wear lanolin but personally I felt like it wasn't quite as hydrating so lanolips has sort of filled that void for me when it comes to the bite beauty lip mask and they have a really nice range of all different flavors and colors this one smells exactly like a glazed donut it is heavenly I just kind of want to lick it off but it's so nice and it really does smooth out my lip lines and just make everything look softer so I just wanted to mention this quickly and I'm just gonna kind of leave this on for a while I do have a bunch of lip products to test out so we'll be doing that later and there is one product in this video that is not drugstore and I wanted to talk about that first because it's gonna be my base product so this is the Beekman 1802 milk tint SPF 43 so this is a mineral sunscreen it's a tint formula so it's supposed to give a little bit of coverage and it comes in a dropper style bottle like a lot of their skincare does it's zinc oxide at 12% and it claims to be a silicone free tinted primer formulated with goat milk prebiotics and mineral sunscreen and I got mine in the shade light and I've just been trying all the different tinted mineral sunscreens lately because that's my favorite type of formula I can be sensitive to chemical formulations so I have to be careful which ones I use normally the Korean formula work out okay on me but I have reacted to some chemical formulas in the past so I just want to quickly show you a swatch of what this one looks like so this is the shade light I think it's a little bit peachy on me but hopefully it's more sheer and it'll just kind of blend in it also has a very runny serum like texture and it did actually say on the packaging that this is a primer not a skin tint so I don't know how much coverage it's gonna give I might have to put on something else we'll see but so far just blending it in wow this is so thin especially for a mineral formula I'm pretty surprised mineral sunscreens are normally associated with that really thick kind of heavy chalky feeling they usually take a lot of effort to rub in and they leave a little bit of a white cast this isn't doing that at all it feels basically like a skin tint going on which is really nice it also has a lot of of hydration to it as well my dry skin is definitely drinking this right up but I'm curious to see if any of you out there who have oily skin like this because it does feel a little bit on the greasier side so I'm curious to see what this feels like after a few minutes and let it kind of set down a little bit I think once I blend it in the color is fine so no complaints there and I do think the coverage is actually pretty good I would just go out of the house like this for today's video I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of concealer around my eye area but on the rest of my face I think the coverage is pretty decent so let me just zoom you guys in so you can see what it looks like all right so here's what it looks like up close I don't see it settling into fine lines or pores it's not grabbing to dry patches anywhere so I think it looks pretty smooth overall it does have a little bit of like that tacky dewy feel so again I'm just gonna maybe focus on my eyes for a few minutes let this set down and then we'll see what it feels like after that but I mean so far I feel like it looks pretty good for concealer I'm just going to apply the Catrice True Skin in the shade Neutral Ivory. And just quickly, here's what this color looks like. So it's a little bit lighter than my skin tone, but I find that this really brightens up my eye area nicely. It also has incredible coverage without looking cakey. It's one of the smoothest concealers in my collection. I just love this stuff so much. The coverage level reminds me of Shape Tape, but I just think it sits on the skin so much more naturally and it doesn't look as dry on me. 
and it's so much cheaper too. So it's all around a win-win. By the way, this brush is the Profusion Flat Setting Powder Brush, but I love using it for concealer. I think it's like the perfect size. And because it has a little bit of a fluffier texture, I find that it just blends out creams so nicely. It gives a little bit more of a sheer wash, which looks a lot more natural. I actually saw this hack on TikTok a while ago. People were using fluffy brushes to blend out concealer, and it really does make everything look super flawless. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my nose too. I feel like the Beekman primer covered pretty well, but my nose is usually the first place that I lose coverage. So I just figured it can't hurt to add a little bit more. So yeah, I think just adding concealer in those two key areas made everything look a lot more even. So like I said before, I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit, see how it sinks in, and then I'll decide after I do my eyes whether I'm going to set this with powder, like whether I feel like it needs it, or if I'm just gonna leave it as is. So for eyes, I got new eyeshadow sticks from CoverGirl's Clean Collection. So I ended up getting five shades in all, which I'm really excited about. I love a good eyeshadow stick, and I'm so hoping that this formula is worth it. I think e.l.f. makes a pretty good one, and I really like the new Milani ones that they came out with a few months ago. But I was so curious about these, I just took the risk and I got a bunch of colors. So I'm just going to swatch these really quickly. This is what the actual product looks like. So it's just your standard eyeshadow stick. The packaging's really similar to other ones that are out there. And they do seem really soft and silky. All right, so here are the colors from the top we have French Violet up here, then we have Sky Dust which is a gorgeous silvery gray, then we have Bronze Glow, Dreamy Pink, and the last one is Ballerina Blush on the bottom. So these all look so pretty. They were super easy to draw on. They feel I would say as creamy as something like the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. So I'm really excited to put these on my eyes. Should I do eye swatches of all of them? I think I should. I really want to see what they all look like on. Okay, so the first one is Ballerina Blush. So this one's just a really sheer wash of light pink. It's so beautiful. I feel like this is a great one and done shade if you just want a super casual, easy look. Then the next one is Dreamy Pink. So this one looked like more of a satin finish when I was swatching it versus shimmery. It didn't seem to have as much shine as the Ballerina Pink, but it's also not a matte. So I'm just gonna quickly blend out the edge of this with a small brush. This is the Profusion Pointed Crease Eyeshadow Brush. All right, so over here we have Ballerina Blush and on this side is Dreamy Pink. Already I can tell you I love the way that these apply. So I think the key for me now is gonna be how long do they actually last? Are they gonna crease? Are they gonna fade throughout the day? These are the big questions that I have right now. All right, moving on, we have the shade Bronze Glow. This one also kind of like the Ballerina shade looked like it was a little bit more shimmery, but I will say these don't have glitter in them, which is really nice. They're more of a metallic sheen. So again, I'm just gonna blend out the edges of this one. So that's Bronze Glow. Again, just a really subtle, easy to wear color. And then this one is Sky Dust. I'm really excited about this one. It's that gorgeous metallic gray. It's almost like a taupe. It's not a straight up gray. I feel like there's a little bit of brown in here, but I feel like this would be so amazing for a smoky eye. It really seems like it makes an impact. All right, so I'm just gonna blend the top edge. I'm not blending on my actual eyelid because I don't wanna take away that shine, but I just wanna let it blend a little bit better into my skin. And this one, Sky Dust, actually does seem to have little tiny, tiny micro glitters, but because it's a cream formula, I don't see those necessarily falling all over the place. Hopefully they don't have fallout, we'll see. But again, this one is Bronze Glow over on this side, and then Sky Dust. These are both also really beautiful. All right, so the last shade I'm just gonna apply to both eyes and that's the one that I'm gonna wear all day. And I kind of removed my concealer a little bit, so I'm just gonna put a little more on the inner and outer corners real quick. All right, so this last shade is French Violet, which also looked like the most gorgeous color. Although it's not as purple as the name suggests, it's kind of more of like a dusty, mauve or mauve color. Just gonna blend the edge. I tend to use eyeshadow sticks a lot just in my daily life because they're just so easy. They're just kind of a one step, just apply, blend really quick and you're done. I feel like I don't always have time to just like play in a palette and apply multiple colors. So they're just really easy and I love having more affordable options too. So this color also isn't the shiniest. I would say this is more of a satin finish like the second color that we looked at. I think it was dreamy pink. So this one is kind of like that, but it's a little more of a smokier shade, which is so pretty. All right, so here's the shade French Violet. 
I'm just gonna quickly line my eyes with the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner in the shade Brown. And for mascara, I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Lash Extender Tubing Mascara. I've really been loving this one as well. It gives great length and volume and it comes off so easily without smudging or flaking. So it's definitely one of my new favorite mascaras. Next up, I don't have a new blush, unfortunately. So I'm gonna use this one by Florence by Mills. It's the Cheeky Pop blush. And this shade is Lavish Lena, which is one of my favorites. It's like a really beautiful cool tone shade. And I love to pick this up with the Profusion Round Tapered Powder Brush. This brush is dense, so even though it's technically a powder brush, I prefer to use it with creams because it's so dense and it's also a nice small size. So it just gets right into your cheek area perfectly. And if you missed the video where I talked about these blushes, definitely check them out. You are gonna be so surprised. I was blown away when I first saw them. The only reason I even bought them is because I was doing a video on the best rated makeup at Ulta and in the blush category, these had almost a perfect score. And I was so curious because I really don't hear anybody talking about this brand and the few things that I've tried were just okay. But these are just the smoothest formula. They have a nice amount of pigmentation. They're not too sheer where you have to build up tons of layers, but they're also not so pigmented that they're hard to work with. They just blend out effortlessly. And the best part is this lasts all day. The way you see it here is the way it normally looks when I'm going to bed at night. So it's an incredibly long lasting formula and they're under 20 bucks. So these are definitely worth checking out. Um, next, I have several different lip products that I wanted to try and I figured I would just do some lip swatches and see what everything looks like on. So first up, I have the new NYX Butter Gloss Bling. So these are the butter glosses, but with shimmer in them. And I was so excited and happy because I love the butter gloss. Glosses. I'm so glad that they came out with a new version of them. They look really, really pretty. So I ended up getting five out of the eight shades to try. And this is what they look like. Don't these look gorgeous? And if you've tried the original butter glosses, you know that they're a very thin formula. They're not sticky and they're a little bit more on the sheer side. So they don't give you a ton of color, but they're a super comfortable lip gloss formula. So they've been one of my favorites for ages now. All right, so from top to bottom, we have She Got Money. Next is Shimmer Down. Then we have Big Spender here in the middle. Then we have Pay Me in Gold and Hustla at the bottom. So as you can see, these are definitely more on the sheer side, but I think it'll be most helpful just to see them actually on my lips. So first up, we'll start with the shade Hustla. And these have a really nice vanilla cookie kind of scent. All right, so here's the shade Hustla. This is like a really beautiful, rich berry brown. And one thing I wanna mention is I do like feel the little glitters that are in here a little bit when I press my lips together, there's a little bit of grittiness. All right, then this next shade's called Pay Me in Gold, which I was a little bit nervous about because it looks really gold in the tube, but on my lips, because it's sheer, it just gives like this beautiful kind of golden glow. Next up is Big Spender. This one is more of a deeper maroon shade and it actually does show up pretty well. Next up we have Shimmer Down. This one is kind of a bright orange in the tube, but again, because it's more sheer, it doesn't look quite as bright once you put it on. And then the last one is She Got Money. So this is a really pretty cool tone pink. Okay, so a couple things with these. I do love the scent of them and I love how they're not sticky and they're really smooth just like the original. But what I'm not crazy about with these is the grittiness. Like if you go to rub your lips together, you definitely feel all of those glitter particles. The other thing is if you have a lot of lines in your lips like I do, I find that really metallic or glittery formulas like this can exaggerate the lip lines a little bit or kind of draw more attention to them. Whereas the original non-glittery formula just looks a little bit smoother on. But that being said, I do think these are really fun. I would probably wear them if I were going out somewhere special and I just wanted to kind of take my lip look up and notch or maybe apply one of these on top of another lipstick just to add that little bit of sparkle. But I don't think this is a formula that I would reach for every day, mostly because I think the grittiness would bother me just a little, but I could probably deal with it for a night out. So 
Just a couple things to keep in mind about these. Next up, ColourPop released their So Juicy Plumping Lip Balms. So these are another Tarte Maracuja Juicy Dupe. The packaging is that same click pen style where you just kind of click it up to raise the product. And these also are supposed to have a little bit of a plumping effect to them as well. So on the box, it says there are three in one balm, gloss and plumper that helps hydrate and plump your lips with a glossy finish. So I ended up getting four shades and I just wanna quickly swatch them for you. I'm curious to see what this formula is like because I wasn't crazy about the e.l.f. ones. I felt like those sank into the lines in my lips and they were really thick and they ended up looking patchy. But I did really like the NYX version that they had come out with. So so I'm hoping these will be good. I feel like I should do a video on all of the different click up bombs that have come out because there are so many different ones and I feel like they're really hit or miss. I definitely have some that I like more than others. Okay, so here are all the colors. We have PSL on the top. Then we have Guava Glaze. This one is Dough. And then the bottom one is Dolled Up. So I think these look really pretty. They're a little bit sheer but that's kind of how the Tarte ones are too. They don't have a ton of color. So I definitely wanna try all of these on. I'm gonna start with PSL. These have a really melty texture, very similar to the Tarte ones. I think these feel more like the Tarte than the Elf. I thought the Elf were a little bit thicker. These have that really melty feel, but they're thin. They might even be a little bit thinner than the Tarte ones as well, like a little bit less goopy. So anyway, this is PSL. These also have a really mild tingle, similar to the Tarte ones. Next up is Doe, and this one is a beautiful nude brown. I love this color. This is like the perfect your lips but better. And then last but not least is Dolled Up. I love this one too. This is a really pretty cool tone pink. I don't know, these ColourPop ones might be my favorite affordable version yet. We'll have to see. They're not as pigmented as the NYX ones, but they're also probably the closest thing to the original Tarte formula. So I think these are great so far. So I'm gonna go about the rest of my day. I'm gonna just wear everything, see how it holds up, and then I'll come back and do a check-in later on. I did forget to decide whether I was gonna put powder on or not. The skin tint seems to have sunken in pretty well. It's not nearly as sticky as it was before, but maybe I'll put a little bit of transition translucent powder just on one half of my face and leave the other half alone and then we can compare them at the end of the day. So this is the Moira Loose Setting Powder that they just came out with recently. I've really been loving this a lot. It's really weightless. It doesn't look dry or powdery on the skin. So, all right, we'll definitely see if this has any impact on the way that the primer, I called it a skin tint before, but it's actually a primer. So we'll see if it makes any difference. I mean, it definitely took down some of the shine that it has. So anyway, guys, I'll meet you back here in about eight hours or so. Hey guys, it's about 8 p.m. So I just wanted to quickly check in and share my final thoughts. So as you can see, like I said, the blush is still holding up beautifully. It is such a long lasting formula. I really think you guys would love it. Also, the eyeshadow, I'm happy with it. I feel like it hasn't creased on me at all. It hasn't faded, it still looks really good. Granted, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I have dry eyelids. So if you have oily eyelids, it could potentially break it down a little bit more than like what you're seeing on me because as a rule, I think cream shadows do tend to hold up pretty well on me. So that is one thing to consider. If you do wanna try these, maybe just start with one shade and see how it holds up. I would say if I had to choose my favorite colors. I prefer the ballerina blush one and the bronze glow because I just felt like those looked a little bit more shimmery than this shade or um, the dreamy pink one did. I could totally see myself using these as one and done shadows and I also really liked the taupey gray one sky dust. I thought this was beautiful too but again that's personal preference. I just like a little bit more shimmer and glow on my lids but as far as longevity goes I think these are really holding up beautifully. Also when it comes to the Beekman 1802 primer I just want to zoom you guys in so we can see what this looks like now. All right, so when it comes to the non-powdered side, if I touch my face, it doesn't feel sticky anymore. After, I would say about an hour, it kind of lost that dewy feeling and it just sort of sank in the rest of the way to my skin, but it still does have just a slight bit of glow on this side. So I think it doesn't look quite as smooth in my cheek area as this side does with the powder, just because this kind of gave it more of an airbrushed look. So if I look at both sides of my face, I do think I prefer this side over here, but I don't feel like this side looks bad either. I think it actually held up really well. 
My chin is probably the one exception. I can see some redness poking through here and this is an area that I did not add concealer to. So maybe in the future, I would just put a little dot there as well because I do think it held up better on my nose just because I added that extra layer. And also I do tend to touch my chin a lot. Like if I'm thinking or, you know, I'm reading something, I tend to kind of do this. So foundation generally wears off on my chin. It's just kind of a trouble spot for me and I have to stop doing that. I shouldn't be touching my face, but overall this held up way better than expected. But again, if you have oily or combo skin, you might have a way different experience than I did just because it is a tiny little bit on the greasier, more emollient side. So if you have dry skin, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this one. If not, you may wanna check out some more reviews if you can find them or try to get a sample of this if you can first. And then when it comes to the lip products, I'm definitely loving the ColourPop So Juicy lip balms. I'm wearing the pink shade again, dolled up. I did have to reapply it for the video. Like any tinted lip balm, they don't last. So it's something you definitely need to reapply throughout the day, but I just love how smooth they are. They they make my lips look smoother. They don't feel goopy or like thick or sticky. And I really like the vanilla scent. The tingle isn't too overwhelming. So overall, I'm loving those. I think they're great. As far as the NYX Butter Gloss Bling, like I said before in the video, not my favorite because of the gritty formula. I did think the colors were really pretty though, and it's something that I would probably just wear just once in a while if I had somewhere more fancy to go, if I was getting dressed up or something like that. So yeah, I think that's everything, and I wanna thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. And if you have a little bit of extra time and you wanna check out another one of my videos, I'll just put something right up here that I filmed recently that you could check out next. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.